In section 6.2, we're going to talk about the representation of functions. So we're going to start at the top of page 250 in your book, if you want to follow along, with our key idea. Now I do want you to write down the key idea, but you don't need to draw the machine. So your key idea is this. We're going to talk about functions as equations. So let's look at our key concept, our definition. A function rule, or just a function, it is an equation that describes the relationship between your inputs, which is called your independent variable, and your outputs, which is called your dependent variables. Now, in this problem, dependent and independent, your input would be like your x, your dependent would, our output would be your y. Now, let's look at our function machine. Your x which is your input, goes into the machine, and then there's a rule, there's an equation, which we're going to call a function. You plug in what the input is, and the output is what comes out of your machine. So for example, in this function, y equals 3x, if we plugged in 5, 5 would get plugged in for x, 3 times 5, that'd be y equals 15, so y is your output, that comes out, you plug 3 in, 9 would come out. You plug 5 in, 15 would come out. You plug in 10, 30 would come out. Negative 1 goes in, negative 3 comes out. So example 1, I want you to write down part A. Write a function rule for the phrase, the output is 5 less than the input. So let's look at what we have for words. The output. So we're going to start with the output. We have to write this as a a function rule. Now remember, a function rule is just an equation. That's all it is. So the output, well that's going to be y. Output is always y. Is. Is stands for equals. Then it says 5 less than. 5 less than means minus 5. Now that means at the end, minus 5. And then, the input. The input is x, so it would look like that. y equals x minus 5. So your equation, or function rule, would be y equals x minus 5. You cannot have 5 minus x. 5 less than the input would be 5 less than x, so it would be x minus 5. So let's go to the next part. So part b says, write a function rule. For the output is the square of the input. So once again, we're going to start with the output. The output is y. Is. Is equals. The square of the input. Well, the square is going to be something squared. The input is x. So our equation would be y equals x squared because the output is the square of the input. And the square means you're taking something to the second power. Example 2. What is the value of y equals 2x plus 5 when x is 3? Now, this should be honestly reviewed from about 6th or 7th grade. So all you do here is once you get this written down, we take our equation, y equals 2x plus 5, we take the value of 3 and we substitute it in for x. It's just like substitution. So we take y equals 2 times 3 plus 5. So that would give us y equals, that's just 6 plus 5, and that gives us 11. So when x is 3, y is 11. For the next example, we're going to find the value of y when x is negative 6 and a half. So the first thing we do is take the negative 6, y equals 7 minus 2 times negative 6. And now we just simplify. So that's 7 plus 12, and that would be y equals 19. Secondly, y equals 7 minus 2 times a half. This should be all be easy review. 2 times a half is 1, so 7 minus 1. That gives us a y value of 6. So once again, your input is negative 6 and a half, your output would be 19, 
and 6. Example 3 says, graph the function y equals negative 2x plus 1 using the inputs of negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. All this is is just another way to write a t-table. That's it. This is something you should be able to do quite easily and with very little work. So input-output table would be an xy table, or you could put input and output instead of x and y. So our input, our x values are going to be negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So now we just plug in all of those values for x. Now once again, if you wanted to show the work, and you wanted to, for example, plug in negative 1, plug in 0, plug in 1, and plug in 2. If you wanted to show all those steps and take all of these x values and plug them in for each of your x values in your function, you can do that. But I would also be able to expect as an 8th grader, you can do this in your head. Negative 2 times negative 1 is 2. 2 plus 1 gives you an output of 3. Negative 2 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Plus 1 is negative 1. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Plus 1 is negative 3. So there's your input-output table. We now need to graph those four points. So in your notes, pause the video and draw a small coordinate plane in your notes. And now we're just going to graph our three points. Negative 1, 3. 0, 1. 1, negative 1. And 2, 3. And there was our line. Now once again, you can use what we've been using for like the last four months. And use slope and y-intercept to check it your intercept, your y-intercept is 1, our slope is negative 2, we go down 2 over 1. And that's what you get if you use slope and intercept to check your answer. But here we made a t-table, otherwise called an input-output table. Example 4. Please take the time to write down this problem. The number of pounds P of carbon dioxide produced by a car is 20 times the number of gallons G of gasoline used by the car. Write and graph a function that describes the relationship between G and P. So the first thing we have to do is we're going to underline keywords and write a function. Once again, a function is just an equation. So, the number of pounds P, so we're going to start with P, of carbon dioxide. So right there, is our P is equals 20 times the number of gallons G. So 20, we'd write 20, times the number of gallons, which is G, would just be P equals 20 G. So our equation is P equals 20 G. We now need to graph this. So I'm going to make a t-table. Now, we normally would use x and y, but we're not going to use that because we're using g and p. g is the input, p is the output. So g stands for the number of gallons. So what's the least number of gallons you can have in your car of gas? It'd be 0. So I'm just going to use 0, 1, and 2. So if you take this and plug it in, 0, right here, plug it in. That would give you 20 times 0. That would give you 0. Plug in 1. 20 times 1 is 20. 20 times 2 is 40. 3 times 20 would give you 60, and it keeps going. So we need to graph this. Now in this graph, we only need the first quadrant since we're talking about positive measurements. This is going to be your gallons, which is your x. This is going to be p, which is your y. We have to label. Our horizontal axis is G, but we have to say gallons. Now, we have to have gallons of what, though? Well, it's gasoline. So this is gallons of gasoline. And our vertical axis would be carbon dioxide, which is in pounds. You must label. Gallons of gasoline, what do we count by? We're counting by ones. So this would be 0, 1, 
two, three, and so on. Our P, which is our vertical axis, is going from 0, 20 to 40. So we're going by 20s. So you can count by 20s. I'm, however, going to count by 10s. You can count by 20s if you want. So let's graph them. 0, 0 is our first point. Then we go up from 1 to 20. We go from 2 to 40. And if you graphed one more, 3 times 20, that's going to give you 60. You'll notice it keeps going. Since the least amount of gallons is 0, we're not going to draw an arrow at the bottom of our graph. We're going to start at 0, 0, and then it continues upward. So there is our function and our graph that describes the relationship between G and P.